365 Days in Music video is a concept that pulls together hundreds of notable historical events that happen during the 365 days. And today we will share with you the most remarkable events that happen in the month of January. Hi guys and welcome to Historically. This timeline is a collection of the most remarkable events in music history for the month January. The timeline provides fast facts and information about these notable events, which are ordered chronologically. So let's get started. January 1st, The Grateful Dead and Big Brother and The Holding Company perform at the New Year's Whale in San Francisco. Hell's Angels host the bash to thank hate Ashbury hippies for bailing Angel Chocolate George from jail, 1967. January 2nd, 5,000 people attend R&B star Johnny Ace's funeral in Memphis after he accidentally killed himself in a game of Russian roulette, 1955. January 3rd, Aretha Franklin was the first woman inducted into the Hall of Fame, 1987. His colleagues and the rest of the committee have written Aretha into history. Ladies, can I hear from the ladies? January 4th, the Jimi Hendrix Experience played the first of what would be over 240 gigs in this year when they appeared at the Bromel Club, Bromley, 1967. January 5th, King singer Ray Davis was shot in the leg while on holiday in New Orleans. The 59-year-old singer-songwriter was shot when running after two men who stole his girlfriend's purse at gunpoint, 2004. January 6th, the Rolling Stones began their first tour as headline act with Ronettes, 1964. January 7th, San Francisco's underground FM station, KMPX, holds a ballot amongst its listeners to find out who would be the best candidate on a pro-grass ticket. The people say they wanted Bob Dylan for president, Paul Butterfield for vice president, George Harrison as UN ambassador, Jefferson Airplane as the Secretary of Transportation, duh, and the Grateful Dead as Attorney General. They had made to do with Nixon though, 1968. January 8th, Elvis Presley was born, 1935. January 9th, Mick Jagger was refused a Japanese visa because of a 1969 drug bust. This, unfortunately, halted the Rolling Stones' plan to tour the Orient, 1973. January 10th, an Australian woman will face court today, charged with repeatedly stabbing her husband with a pair of scissors in the back, shoulder and thigh, because he played Elvis Presley's song, Burning Love, over and over again, 2006. January 11th, the Whiskey Go Go nightclub opened in Los Angeles, California. It is recognized as the first disco in the US, 1963. January 12th, the Supremes appeared in an episode of Tarzan on NBC TV. The ladies played a group of nuns, 1968. January 13th, Bobby Brown was arrested in Augusta, Georgia, for simulating a sex act on stage. It was the second time that he had been arrested by the Augusta Police Department for the same offense, 1993. January 14th, the term rock and roll is coined by Alan Fed, 
1955. January 15th, Sean Lennon's remake of his father's Give Peace a Chance was released to coincide with the United Nations midnight deadline for Iraq to withdraw from Kuwait. The lyrics were updated to reflect concerns of the 1990s, 1991. January 16th, Paul McCartney was jailed in Tokyo for possession of a half a pound of marijuana. He spent 10 days behind bars before being kicked out of the country by Japanese authorities. The reminder of his story was cancelled, 1980. January 17th, NBC TV brought the Monkey series, placing it on their 1966 autumn schedule, 1966. January 18th, first jazz concert at the Met, Louis Armstrong and others, 1944. January 19th, the soundtrack of the film Easy Rider, the movie that made the star of Peter Fonda, became a gold record. It was the first pop culture film soundtrack to earn the gold award, 1917. January 20th, during a Ozzy Osbourne concert in Des Moines, Iowa, a member of the audience threw an unconscious bat onto the stage. Thinking it was one of his rubber fakes, Ozzy picked it up and bit its head off. The singer was taken to hospital to be given rabbi's injection, 1982. January 21st, David Palmer, a former keyboard player for Jethro Tull, changed his name to D. Palmer, after a successful sex change operation, Palmer was the keyboard player for Jethro Tull between 1969 and 1980, 2003. January 22nd, the Columbia Phonograph Company is formed in Washington, D.C., 1889. January 23rd. Rock and roll fans under the age of 18 in Cleveland, Ohio were banned from dancing in public, unless accompanied by an adult, after Ohio police introduced a law dating back to 1931, 1956. January 24th, the producer of the New Kids in the Block LP, Hanging Tough, sues for a few million dollars for creative contributions and royalties claiming that they only sang about 20% of the lyrics. The claim is eventually dropped, 1992. January 25th, John Lennon and Okoyono completely shave their heads and declare 1970 as year one. Their hair is donated to Black House, an interracial community center in North London, for auction, 1970. January 26th, Peter Green, guitar virtuoso, Fleetwood Mac's first lead guitar player, was committed to a mental hospital in England. He had fired a pistol in the general direction of a delivery boy. The depressive Peter had left the band in May of 1970. 1977. January 27th. After controversy over Ice-T's song Cop Killer, Warner Brothers Records announces that it is releasing him from his contract due to creative differences, 1993. January 28th, by request, Ted Nugent carves his autograph into the arm of a fan using his Bowie knife, 1978. January 29th, Warner Bros. Records signs Peter, Paul, and Mary, 1962. January 30th. In the UK, Virgin Megastores reports that John Lennon's role on the TV game show I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, has bumped sales of the Sex Pistols, never mind the Bollocks album, up by 20%, 2004.
January 31st, Cher sang the U.S. National Anthem at the 33rd Super Bowl, 1999. Thank you for watching.